Hey Unlocked, this is Austin. Welcome to PC Building 101. When it comes to PC building, it really is hard to argue with building your own. Not only are you usually getting the best bang for your buck, but you get to customize the system exactly how you want it. One of the most important things is don't be afraid. Building a computer is just like adult Legos. As long as you're not going over the top and trying to force something that doesn't need to be there, you're going to be fine. So to start with, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. Seriously, this is the only tool you're going to need for the build. On top of that, make sure you have a nice, decent, clean workspace and try to stay away from things that might get you a little bit of static electricity, such as cats, balloons, carpet, whatever. Next up, it's time to install the heart of the build, our CPU, which in this case is an Intel Core i5. Now, CPUs are fairly standard, but there's a couple things you're going to want to avoid. While the CPU itself isn't incredibly fragile, you do not want to touch any of the gold connectors on the back. When handling the CPU, just make sure that you touch it by the edges. So while we're here, you'll be able to see that there are two notches on the top of the CPU. These go into the corresponding notches on the socket, making sure that it only goes in one way. So using those notches that we pulled out earlier, just gently set it into place, and it should rest by itself. So once it is, just pull the arm back, and it'll give you a little bit of tension, but it's not too bad. And that's it, CPU is installed. So with thermal paste, you're gonna to wanna to be pretty sparing. I usually aim for about the size of a grain of rice. It can be tempting to go way overboard on this, but it really does not take that much thermal paste to cover the processor. Go easy on it. Next up is installing your memory. So when it comes to RAM, you'll be able to find a little notch about two thirds of the way down. This is going to match to a corresponding notch on the motherboard. To install, all you need to do is firmly press on both sides until it clicks into place. Before we install the motherboard, we want to make sure all of our brass standoffs are in place. So let's see these little mounting points, which for this case are already pre-installed. However, if they're not, you want to make sure that each and every one of them are screwed in in the appropriate places. So when you're installing the motherboard, what I'd like to do is gently rest it on the standoffs. So what you want to watch out for is to make sure that all the ports are actually flush with the I.O. shield. So you don't want to have any of these little metal connectors blocking anything. Now one of the good things is installing the graphics card is probably the easiest part of the build. All you need to do is find whichever PCI slot that actually will fit the graphics card. Usually that's the top one. Once you line up the graphics card, it should click into place. So once the graphics card is seated, all you really need to do is just make sure that the screws are tight just to give it a little bit of support. Especially with a big card like this, you want to make sure that it's not totally just hanging off the motherboard. Now comes the fun part, cabling. Luckily, because this is a modular power supply, we actually don't have to use all of these cables. In fact, that makes our job easier. So at this point, it's a good idea to go through your cables and figure out exactly what you're going to need. Because this is modular, for example, if we don't need this, we don't actually need to connect it. That means that our cables are going to be a little bit neater. So once you have all of your cables connected and you know what you're going to be using, the next step is to just start running them in place. So with a case like this Fractal Design Define S, you'll see there's actually a fair bit of room back here for cabling. So the most important thing is just think a little bit ahead, right? Some of the big heavy cables might make sense to start running them ahead of time so that when it actually comes time to plug everything in, you don't have a tangled mess. There are a few key cables to keep in mind, like the 20 plus four pin, which powers the motherboard, four plus four pin for the CPU, the PCIe power cable for the graphics card, and the SATA power for your hard drives and SSDs. You've also got to plug in any fans in your system to the headers on the motherboard, along with wiring the front panel connectors from the case. This is one of the most tedious parts of building a computer, but there's usually a diagram to show you where each connector goes. Once you turn the system on and make sure everything is working, do your best to clean up what cables you can, and it's time to install Windows. Luckily, this is super simple with Windows 10 since it comes on a USB drive. Just run through the prompts and you'll be up and running in no time. Building a PC really isn't that difficult, especially when you use a Newegg Super Combo or an unlocked PC build. Hopefully you found this video helpful and be sure to keep an eye on Unlocked for the latest reviews and deals and to take your builds to the next level.